Ready? Select board meeting, March 7th, 2022. This meeting is being recorded. All right, folks, we're going to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. United States of America, to the Republic, Indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Yep. Okay. All right, in attendance tonight is Joe Deedy, Russ Fox, Doug Moblin, Mr. Steinhardt is on Zoom, I take it. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. Here's our administrative assistance. So first up, six o'clock is public comment. If anyone has anything they'd like to say, please state their name and address for the record. Good evening, Hotel in 45 Klein Road. Um, I wanted to go back to the February 22nd meeting. Okay. And it was under new business. And it was regarding the vote for the $800,000 for the uh, federal <coughs> year 2021 for the community development grant. Is that grant being used for the master plan? I will get back to you, quite honestly. I don't have that answer in front of me. Okay. But, okay. But that's just me talking, but I, I'll get you the right answer. So my follow-up to that then, Mr. Beattie, is if it's not being utilized for the master plan, what are we planning on doing with that $800,000, which is directly oh, yeah. related towards housing and community development? And can we have access to look at what the terms are for that grant as well? So the way that works, and I'm, this is off the cuff, is you apply for that grant through the CB, CBDG, right? Yes. Correct? Yep, PBPC that helps us submit that. That was that. Those were the uh, hearings during last summer into the fall. All right, so those hearings took place last summer and fall. So, so much went to housing through if you needed septic and you qualify. Some of it goes to roads that aren't chapter 90 qualified, especially down by the lakes. So when you enter that, when you apply for that grant, everything's already lined out. Okay, so, so it's an, speculate. Yes, it is. And I can get you a copy of where it went. That's not a problem. But unfortunately, you can't go back and then, actually, I think you can go back in later if you don't spend all that money, you know, like the food pantry, for instance. We say we spend X and there's a little bit left over. I think that's how we bought them their van one year because there was enough left over that they didn't use in a specific line item. We were able them to acquire the van, I believe. Okay. But yeah, that's already gone, per se. We can't really usually go back in and grab any of that. Yeah, a big, a big section of that particular grant is going to help with the, um, the projects you have on Bungalow Street. That's where it's going. Okay. Anyone else for public comment? Anybody on Zoom? Is anybody waving? Okay. Six to three, close enough. So up first, we have Diane seeing a possible ban on sale of alcoholic nip bottles. Come on up. That's all you got? Oh, no. Okay, because I do better than that at my place. No. Uh, I have copies for you all to one Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I would like to request uh, an ordinance on the sale of alcoholic nip bottles in town. Um, I walk my three dogs almost daily on Sheep Pasture Road and Point Grove Road. It's difficult to walk continuously with them because they have to stop and sniff every single bottle along the way. Doesn't really get my heart going the way I would like. Um, I sometimes walk with a trash bag to pick up litter. I've seen another neighbor do the same. 
I've seen people post on Facebook thanking the people they see picking up the litter, but they don't realize the litter is all nip bottles. On February 19th, in just under a half a mile, I picked up two 13 gallon trash bags on Sheep Pasture and Point Grove Road. 19 of those were just in front of my own house and I didn't go hunting, I didn't go digging in the bushes, I didn't go digging in the snow banks. These were all right in front of me or in threes and fours on the side of the road. Um, in that inventory, there were four Dunkin' Donut cups, one paperboard drink carrier, two water bottles, seven lottery tickets, four cigarette packs, two rubber gloves and a face mask, a freshly peeled banana, and a $1 bill. The rest of that 26 gallons was hundreds of nip bottles and just two crushed beer cans. And the issue here is not only is it a mess, you can't walk the dogs because some of them are broken. You got to be on the scout in front of them to make sure they don't step on. The bigger issue is these people have these in their cars. They're not walking with these bottles. They're drinking them probably in their car. The um, number one in there was Smirnoff vodka. It's odorless, it's colorless. It's perfectly in a water bottle or in your coffee mug and nobody knows. These people are driving with it. They're probably going to work. They could be driving heavy equipment. They could be processing your insurance claim while they have this in their mug. Um, it's an ecological problem, serious public safety issue, in my opinion. I've seen other residents cite the same issues on their streets. It's not uncommon. Just coming here, on the way here, I was pointing out while we were driving, again, down Sheep Pasture Road, this way, towards Town Hall. I went, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's two, there's one. That was very <coughs> short distance from the church to Depot Street. It's a lot. I was talking to someone at the library today. There were two right in front of me at the library on the sidewalk. It's a big issue. So I'm asking that you all consider it. And if you think it's worthy to put in an ordinance on this. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, but my visual aids. So those, you have pictures of the day's collection. I, I pick them up in front of my house every day to- Just yeah, I, I mean, I, three I get days it. later, well, three I, days later, I went out to the same less than half a mile and picked up this bag. It's all nip bottles. <coughs> Yesterday, which was 12 days from the last journey, I went out and picked up this bag in the same less than half a mile. That's fresh. It still smells. It's a lot. Time and your consideration. Okay. And you're, you're, the dog is seeking help, I assume. Uh, she has hope now. Okay. She has hope now. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Everyone, you want to sit a little bit to the side here? My voice doesn't carry very well anyway. <laughs> so, um, hey, Bert Hansen, 153 Mort Mining Road. I'm here actually on behalf of the Agriculture Commission yep. um, and the uh, 61A status of Art Pennell's farm at 72 Mort Mining Road. He, um, I sent you guys a letter the other day, March 3rd. Um, he has a purchase and sale agreement from the same developer that's building the other houses on the south end on of the south end. Okay. And uh, it's 32 acres of, of uh, farmland there that um, agriculture and conservation and the uh, uh, CPC would actually like to see preserved. Um, and, and Mr. Pennell is interested in the preservation as well. Um, so our task is to that requires, as you of course know, a warrant on the on the town meeting uh, for the town meeting coming up in May. Uh, so my uh, mission here tonight is just to be sure that we can uh, 
have the the full 120 days that the uh, you know the, the uh, right first refusal allows, uh, so we can do some research into uh, into preserving this and see um, you know see how to best do that. I don't know if there's a a mechanism whether you guys vote on it or anything. I mean to allow the I don't know if I don't know if you can override the 120 days. To be honest, um, I don't either. I, <laughs> I think we've we've circulated the the document right, yep. and then past practices if a board comes forth with that they want to potentially exercise the right of first refusal under 61A, this board won't do anything until yeah. the, the question is settled. Um, okay. But yeah. I, I, can, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you if you were- No, no, but, go ahead. But I have a question. Sure. I think it's a, it's a worthwhile endeavor, but it's one, the question I have is around timing because we are only, the 120 days is easy peasy, but we're less than that for the deadline for articles for the warrant for the annual. Right. So, and if we were to have to do anything further for this, I think then it starts to run into problems with time, whether you, the applicant who's requesting the release from 61 would then want to work with the town to extend the time period or, or something to get to that next special or next, even next annual to, to have to, to do that and, and to get funding and everything else that needs to happen. So right. I don't know if any discussion's been had around that or thought around that. Yeah, actually the Conservation Commission is taking that up at their meeting tonight <laughs> at seven. So um, after this, uh, I'm gonna scoot right out because there's Zoom only, so I gotta go home and get on that meeting. Um, community Preservation is interested in it too. They, I do believe they have the funds uh, in their, Account, so to speak. Um, so, but anyway, to your point, we're kind of kind of scrambling to make sure we can get get this together in the next you know, few weeks, you know, for the warrant deadline. Um, one thing, just a little bit of a tangent, but um, we learned uh, recently. I've learned recently that in the town of Lincoln, uh, Mass, they've bought, I believe, it's eleven parcels. And then they lease them back to farmers who who, who need the land. So that's actually a bring some money back to the CPC. So that'd be awesome if we could you know, work that out. But anyway, that's just a good idea. Yeah. And I think the other thing I want to put up for discussion, and perhaps it's time we revisit collectively at a future date, is we used to have, or we have. A list. A list. The, a list. We call it the list. The right? list. We had asked every boarding commission in town to yeah. come back with their list. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Pine the sky, who owns it, where it is, what it is. But if this piece of property came up, that we would die on the field to try to buy it, right? So North Pond was on the list. The golf course was not on the list, by example, right? Okay. So North Pond was on the list. It came up. We did everything we could do, to, and it's it's bought and preserved. Not everybody agrees with how it was bought and preserved, but it's bought and preserved. <laughs> but I'm not, not looking to open an old wound. But my point is when the other piece at the South End came up, I had spoken to a commissioner on, on Agon and said, okay, it's not on the list. So how can we buy some time to try to line up funding or, or what have you? And after much discussion amongst themselves, they decided that but it, it wasn't gonna happen. So maybe it's time to revisit that list now that some boards have changed over and there's two people and, and different, maybe some different priorities that we should revisit that list from and using the data from the, you know, the open space, space open space plan. Maybe it's part of the discussion under the master plan to say, okay, this is a key parcel. If this one comes up, we want to try to do what we can to get it. Um, and then it also speeds the discussion sometimes when other parcels do come in and go, okay, Maybe we can look at it, but this one wasn't on the list. And we really have to keep our powder dry for some things. I think that was the exact term I used with the, the commissioner was, you know, sometimes we'd love to do it, but eventually we're going to, we can't buy every single parcel that comes up. We have to pick our, our spots that we want to go to, go to battle with. Yeah. Right. Actually, I was talking uh, Carl Steinhardt 
and I were talking about this a little bit this morning or this afternoon. And he said, well, is it on the list? <laughs> yes. That's, that's the first thing that we all think about. Is yeah. it on the list, right? Yeah. right. Exactly. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, he's, he's watching there. from up above. So yep, right. I'm, I'm, I'm right here, Bert. <laughs> You're right. It's, it's the same discussion with Head. And the other thing is, I'm not sure if um, parcels that the CPC are very interested, whether or not they might come along um, in the near future, especially the, the one um, up on North Loomis that had monies appropriated at one time, but that went into a land court issue on the Kellogg property. So we want to be mindful of having funds in place to be able to jump on those ones, which were an earlier priority for um, those other boards. That's almost the converse of what I said is, so if we, a parcel comes available that wasn't on the list and we go after it, and then six, eight months, a year later, a parcel that was on the list comes up. Well, maybe we've allocated resources, scarce resource, to now there's one on the list. Now we got to scramble. So yeah. it's a balancing act. It's a balancing act. Gotcha. Yeah. I so uh, I don't. I don't know. I should know this, but I don't know at the moment if it's on the list. <laughs> but I'll, I'll be finding that out. At, uh, I don't recall it being on. I'm not an expert on the yeah. overall. <laughs> Does the 120 start when they clock this? They clocked it in. I Man, we won't you know, be up against it, like you said, time meeting and everything else, anyways. Yeah, I'd have to look up the law. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. No, I don't down. know either. I think it does, though. It's probably when it's clocked in. Yeah. So, and, yeah, I think when the either the owner or the, yeah. the buyer or someone it, yeah. informs the town. We uh, just uh, just a sort of a FYI. Uh, we were notified by uh, Robin on February 15th. Uh, we found out. We and the Conservation Commission found out. About it. So, from the Board of Selectmen, that's our it yeah. clock. I, that's my understanding of processing. Robin, if you know different, I think it gets clocked in with the town clerk, sent to the Board of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen distributes it to the relevant boards for input, which is yeah. right. that process seems to have worked, right? So, so we got that going yeah. for us. Yeah, we do. And yeah, right, and so everybody's got their have their discussion on it, and then it comes back. So you know, the, the AGCOM voted to at least want to investigate it further. The same thing had happened with the parcel down at um, the South End yeah. piece, right? Uh, they come back and said, "Look, we want to look into it more to see if we can get someone some funding or a, a, a farming cooperative of some kind." If I recall, and it didn't come to fruition, and then we let we let it go. But we waited for that feedback to come back. To say, okay, we tried, but we couldn't. So, okay, now we've got to release the right under 61. Yeah, so, yeah, so February 15th or even to thereabouts, that right. takes us to. Right. Days. So but it's, it, it's, it's I was yeah. looking at this and doing the math yeah. in other ways. The articles for town meeting are due at a certain date, which is your 120 gets you way into the where you need to be, but the town meeting is coming up sooner than that date. Right. So, so yeah, totally. We have work to do. Yeah, but, uh, absolutely. I just wanted to be sure to bring it to your attention and um, you know, we're, we're working on it. <laughs> Much appreciated. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Did you have anything else? No. It's just to echo what Doug, we got to. Right. I talked to Art and I know Art would like to see this preserved. I'd like to see it preserved. Yeah. But, what, we got a lot of questions in a very short period mm -hmm. to get answers if it if we wanted it as on an annual town meeting. Right. I mean, there's a house involved, there's barns involved. Right. Uh, is the town of Southwood gonna own houses and barns? Uh, what exactly are we gonna do with it? Is it gonna be uh, used for agricultural purposes? Uh, I know we got the Sofanowski Preserve Less than a quarter of a mile right down, down the street. road yep. that we use for a facility. Um, you know, I'm not against preserving it. I'm just saying we got some serious, serious questions that need to be answered. And I don't know if we're going to be able to answer those before April 1st. Yeah, I, I hear yeah. you. <laughs> you know, you, you do have your work cut out. <laughs> yeah. um, because I, I know that. Uh, with the preserve, the Sofanowski preserve, at one point, the Conservation Commission was in, or almost still is in charge of that mm -hmm. as trustees. 
they were at the beginning were actually paying a farmer to raise a product. Okay. Okay. Until we discovered that and yeah. said, "What are you doing?" Yeah. And yeah. now they tell us that uh, they can't find any farmers that'll pay anything to to uh, raise well hay on Sofanowski Preserve. Yeah. So now we have this land of arts, you know, which would be good for hay or or for maybe for silage, you know, but it would be nice to know that we had farmers lined up that right. are willing to at least pay the, a reasonable fee and, and carry the insurance. And then, but then we still have to figure out what are we going to do with houses and barns? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Art suggested, well, maybe, you know, carving those out. Of course, that's, that's the process. process right. There, and, and that, that's, in the, that's why I'm saying April 1st is in three weeks, and mm -hmm. and that's a big nut. But maybe we can work with art and and, uh, and go that route. But uh, God bless you. <laughs> you know, well, we'll, get it, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a try. You know? That's that's mm -hmm. right. That's There's nothing doing. wrong with giving it a try. Yeah. We'll give it yeah. a run at. Okay. Right. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Mr. Anthony. Payable warrant two 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 one dated three ten twenty two in the amount of two hundred and thirty two thousand seven hundred and eight dollars and twenty one cents. I need a motion for session minutes dated two twenty eight twenty two. Russ Fox will make that motion. Doug Mogan will second the motion. All those in favor. So DDI. Plus Fox I. Doug Mogan I. Okay. Executive session minutes dated 2-28-22. Plus Fox will make that motion. Doug Mogan will second. All those in favor? Joe DDI. Plus Fox I. Doug Mogan I. Okay. Yeah, this goes. All right. So we probably want to do them separate. Uh, application for Hawkers and Peddlers for Fox Brothers Inc. for the dates of 415 and 416 and for 417 2022. This is to sell flowers at the mobile station. Is that Mother's Day? Easter. Easter. That's Easter. Oh, geez. I'm right off. Easter. Um, I will make that motion. I'll second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Yep. All those in favor? Bill Levy, aye. Russ Fox, abstain. Doug Mogan, aye. And then we have another one for Fox Brothers, Inc. This must be Mother's Day, right? <laughs> <laughs> I-657 and 5-8. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. And that is also the sell flowers at the Mona Station. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Joe D, I. Plus Fox will abstain. Doug Mogan, I. Do you sell flowers on Father's Day? Uh, by the we, way, we don't, I mean, we just want to be quiet and silent. Just, just a ask. footnote tomorrow is International Women's Day. Is it? Um, and it has become a very popular day for flowers. Yes, it has. Okay. And we have the cultural, look at that beautiful penmanship. Huh? That's beautiful. The Southwood culture is. Look at it. It was very good. That's gorgeous. You got to give credit with oh this great God. image. So one day liquor license for the cultural council for the art show, which is going to be April 22nd. Um, down, town Hall. Russ Fox will make that motion and wave the police officer. Alrighty. Doug Mogan will second the motion. The map is here. Everything looks like it does every time we do it. Yeah. Yes, we have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Joe DDI. Plus Fox I. Doug Mogan I. Approve emergency 911 board incentive grant of $40,648 for the Southwick Police Department for dispatch. Russ Fox will happily make that motion. Chief, is there anything we should know about this? No, it's, it's right, no, service. 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 Service.
Thank you. So there's a motion made. Yeah. Doug Mogan will second the motion. Thank you. All those in favor? Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan. Thank you, Chief. Uh, approved DPW applications for culvert grants to Mass DER for Klein Road and for Davis Road culvert. Russ Fox will make that motion. Doug Mogan will second the motion. All those in favor? Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. I don't assume. Carl, did that come in? Uh, the yeah. MOA, not yet. We're still uh, waiting for that to be worked out, but it's going to be the same generic language as the previous ones for other supervisory permission, position promotions. Russ Fox will make the motion to approve the chairman signing the MOA with the DPW unit for temporary supervisor role. Doug Mogan will second that motion. All those in favor, Joe DD, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Increase park and rec beach salaries to the minimum wage of fourteen twenty-five per hour. Gates and concessions are fifteen fifty per hour, which is for also it says per hour beach manager. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me read that no, again. Let me read that again. Minimum wage fourteen twenty-five per hour for gates and concessions, and fifteen fifty per hour for beach manager. Russ Fox will make that motion. Doug Mogan will second. All those in favor? Joe DD, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Okay. I have approved agreement with CAO K or Carl Steinhardt for three years. Plus fact, to make that motion. Doug Mogan will second the motion. Uh, and you have to stay all three years, Mr. Steinhardt, correct? <laughs> yeah, I think that is a yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was serious on that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, he wasn't. <laughs> Uh, Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Review Springfield Police Department request for Springfield, I'm sorry, review Southwick Police Department request for Southwick PD overtime police and dispatch account supplemental funding. Whew. Chief, get us up to date. So the police salary is over, overtime line item. Yep. Um, over the last several years, I don't want to say it was purposely level funded, but we've started with the same amount. So historically, going back several budgets, we've had to come before you in the spring um, just for some supplemental funding to carry us into the new fiscal year. Yep. So based on our trend, we've had a lot people out with COVID this year. We have been very back pretty hard with that. And also with the amount of rec patrols that we put out over the summer to cover the issues on the lake, it really cut into our overtime budget as it did with friends that way. So I'm hoping um, seeing uh, $15,000 of monies to get us to that fiscal yep. end. Um, and then for dispatcher salaries, we have a part budget, which is now we pretty much burnt through. Um, our part dispatchers supplement a lot of the shifts that are filled by the full timers, and it was quite a bit this year. As we transition into the uh, utilization process, we are going to be bringing a few people less field over as part time to help with that void. And, um, Salary increase uh, as part of that. Yep. Um, to make it so they work more. Um, so I'm asking for ten thousand dollars in dispatch to get me to Okay. So, Carl, Mr. Chairman, this, and this would go on to the. Uh, this would be going on to the uh, special town meeting warrant agenda for the May meeting. For this. Okay, so we clean up this. This clean it up. Okay, understood. 
Thank you. And then, of course, depending on how police reform goes, this is just a drop in the bucket. Potentially. Yeah, yeah there's still a lot of the trying to see how it's going to play out. No more after July 1. Okay. So I need a motion. Uh, motion to, Carl, just for clarification. So we're going to put this on the special? Yes, sir. It's going to be on there for a year end expense, uh, just as the uh, police union settlement agreement that you signed last fall. Well, that's going to town meeting. That'll also be on that. Uh, and then any of the other colas and any of the other issues that I've talked about with the OPED, as well as, uh, you know, uh, vacation leave, buyback, and so forth to liquidate some liabilities. So Chief Landis can operate until that May meeting. Yeah, that was my question. Does this, what happens if this needs, if needed before then? Then do we do a fun? Uh, you could, you could do, I gave Bob, when Bob had raised the issue, I explained to him both pathways and I think he thought he could get till this uh, May date. Um, it, it's certainly something that he could revisit. If you want to move this up sooner, then you have to do it as an emergency transfer and you could discuss that at the March 19th budget meeting. I believe the chief agreed that- I believe I can make it to- till the, Okay, to the third week in May. And okay. if not, you're just gonna reach out earlier than later. Yeah. And yeah, okay. All right, so Russ Fox will make the motion to put these two uh, requests on a special town meeting to be held the uh, third week of May, 2022. Doug Marwin will second the motion. All those in favor, Joe D. I. Russ Fox, I. Doug Marwin, I. All right, so Carl, next I have approved chairman to sign federal FY19 CDBG grant amendment for PPC for the time extension of 630. Yep, that's correct. That was sent to us by Erica, and that's for the oldest um, federal fiscal year community block grant we have out there sitting that they're closing down. So yep. they need to have another extension that they have to file with that state agency. Okay. Uh, Russ Fox will make the motion to approve the chairman to sign. Doug Mulvin, I'll second. All those in favor, Joe D. D. I. Russ Fox, I. Doug Mulvin, I. Will that be on the counter for me to sign eventually? Uh, yes, sir. I didn't see it. That's what I was asking. Business. Planning board zoning referral for bylaw changes related to major development review bylaw. No, related to major development review bylaw. Sir, how are you? Great. How are y'all doing tonight? We're seeing you a lot lately. <laughs> uh, good to be seen. How about that? It is. No, I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so before you this evening is Thank a request. You. I'm sorry. Name and address. Oh yeah, John Goddard. Hey, town planner. Second West floor, going to left. <laughs> yes, actually, that's right. Uh, frequently found here at Town Hall and yes. uh, DPW headquarters. Uh, before you this evening is a request from the planning board um, to refer a potential bylaw, zoning bylaw amendment, uh, to allow for a major development review process uh, that's been the subject of some informal discussions with the planning board for uh, some months at this point in time. Uh, in a way, it is front-loading a lot of the information that the better local consultants provide in their applications. Uh, in this case, it's putting it to paper for projects that trip certain thresholds in terms of magnitude, how much traffic, how much size, excuse me, the size uh, of building, uh, potentially impervious area, those types of considerations. Um, some of the discussions are also uh, looking into um, putting that information into a comprehensive impact statement. Um, also other ways to allow the public to have notification, perhaps a community meeting um, and assigning responsibilities to, well, in this case, it would be the town planner role uh, in terms of helping to determine um, or at least provide a recommendation of how this might uh, proceed at the planning board level. So, having said that, much of the request is uh, for a referral for the planning board to hold a public hearing related okay. to this process. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> I can see the look. Plus, <laughs> Fox will make that motion. Already. 
I'll second the motion. I just want to go on record before, in case anyone has any objection, I did speak. I've, I've sat through a lot of planning board meetings uh, on this issue, and I did attend one planning board meeting in my role outside of town or with my employer um, and spoke to a potential expansion at my employer. So I just want to get that on the record. But I'll second the motion to send this to the to the planning board to hold a public hearing. Understood. All those in favor? Joe DD aye. That's five time. Doug Moglin, aye. Thank you all for your time tonight. All right, Kittle. Thank it, you. I, I should have probably asked, are you hoping for this annual town meeting? The target, I thought although we're here. playing a bit of a game of brinksmanship would be to yes, hold this uh hearing on the twenty second. Of um, so this can, month. Yes. Um we've opened the hearing on the twenty second. And if this, the arc that the discussion takes leads to, uh, this was the recommendation we back and potentially in the form of a request for a, a warrant article. Right, John. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's not been uncommon for a planning board article that's been referred to them that's in a series of public hearings to, they'll have a warrant article placed on the warrant while the, plan, while the board is reviewing things as long as they come off with a closed hearing and a recommendation for town meeting floor. Gotcha. A placeholder as you will, yeah. All right, thank you, Carl. Thank you. Thank you. All right, authorize chairman to submit a CPC application for funds related to town hall roof project segment. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Right. I'll second that motion. All right, all those in favor, Joe DD, aye. Plus five time. Doug Mogan, aye. Okay, this is the, what this must be. Conservation restriction baseline documentation report for North Pond acquisition, 49 South Long Yard Road. Yeah, Robin has that, uh, the two binder books that oh. were delivered to our office last Thursday afternoon. Concom, Mr. McWilliams. And this is something that has to be done to uh, close out the requirements of our acquisition of that property where the uh, Franklin Land Trust uh, had acquired the land, then approved. We went through town meeting and then it was given to the town through a sale. And now they're going to hold the conservation restriction. Okay, so we just need a motion to approve. Yeah. Yeah, and you have it there. There is a signing page, I believe, on both copies under um, page 96. Okay. Is this just an oversight, Carl? It's, it's, yeah, it's a follow through on what we need. So it's a, it's a, a baseline documentation report that had to be prepared for this because of all the funding sources and for the, uh, the whole. All right, thus far we'll make the motion. Has, has, has this document been reviewed by the relevant board that's going to hold this and send it to us with their approval to sign or as we need it's to come from, It was uh, provided to us by the chairperson of the Conservation Commission to sign off for the town. Fair enough, I'll second the motion. All those in favor, Joe DD aye. Thus far, aye. Doug Mogan aye. Sign out okay, Mr. Steiner, do you have any new business? <coughs> um, I just want to—I mean, obviously, based upon last week's uh, meeting with the uh, designer for the town hall roof in HVAC, I have provided you with copies of the draft barring order. So that is something you'll have to be looking at, and we know the first part of that project will be going out to bid for the roof part because that's a major part that um, is already finished its design. And then the <coughs> uh, was amended after a number of meetings with Mr. Sutton, the clerk of the works and the designer. So that uh, design change will uh, change order will be coming and that uh, value of that will also affect it. And then of course the, the leftover money that would we need to compute from the 
fire station roof and masonry project, which is closing out because those funds would also be re-voted for a like purpose of which this is. So you'll see a copy of that. You should be reviewing that. That will also be a town meeting warrant for the annual. All right, thank you. That's it for new business. Yep. Mr. Fox. No, sir. Mr. Moglin. No new business, sir. I have no new business. Mr. Steiner, do you have any old business? Uh, I had put your goals in a on the um, the bottom of the old business thing. So if you want to go through the rest of this list and get to that, or if you want to start out with that. Uh, we have in our packet. Yeah, it's in your packet. Or more importantly, since we have town council, um, we have town council Ryan O'Hara here. So you may actually want to take these out of order and address the White Street issue on okay. the packet that you also have before you that came from that you were asking about last week on the status. Let's do that. Sir, are you unmuted? Good evening, Ryan. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Good, sir. How are you? Very good. Have you worked this out with all the parties finally? Well, I, I believe it's in a place where the board is uh, It's prepared for a board vote. Uh, okay. You have one final plan in front of you. It is still a draft plan, but it includes a parcel A that is identified. That is where the uh, what would be carved out, essentially, by the relocation. Uh, the if the board were to vote affirmatively tonight on proposing this real or thinking this relocation should go forward, I would go ahead with preparing a warrant so uh, it can be placed on town meeting as it, the actual relocation does require the vote of the town meeting. Okay. And our DPW was happy. Randy Brown. Is he on there, Randy? Hey, Randy. There he is. How you guys doing? Okay. Hey, Randy. Long yes. time no see. Yeah, yes. So I, I did get the email from uh, Tony O'Hara this afternoon. Um, I, it, it's a consistent with the discussion we had about this uh, maybe a month or six weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I don't see any reason why there. You know, on my end, I, this this looks good. Um, we're not losing any rights or any any use to that turnaround area. That was the biggest concern that we had. Yeah. As long as we, ma we maintain that uh, responsibility, that 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 uh, we, we still keep that. Alrighty, Mr. Fox, are you all set? For this? I am all set, Mr. Morgan. I think I'm all set. All right, so we just need a motion to approve. Russ Fox will make the motion to approve the recommendation of Town Council concerning the matter of White Street. Doug Mogul will second that motion. All those in favor? Joe Beattie, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogul, aye. All right, all right gentlemen. Well, I will prepare a uh, warrant article, and that'll be before you in all likelihood at your next meeting. Thank you. Have Thank a good you night. Much. You as well. All right, goals and objectives. A couple down. So are we looking to tweak this, Carl? Yeah, I mean it, it just basically <laughs> reflects it reflects the last time you went through it. You spent a considerable amount of time at one of your meetings. You can either look at it to see if you want to add anything this evening, or each of you can individually review it and provide to me your edits, and I'll put it in as part of the package for a future meeting, whatever your preference is. Hey, gentlemen, make sure you review it this week. You're right, it does, it's cleaned up from the last time we had. Yeah, we spent a lot of time yeah. cleaning up. A, a few things need to be tweaked, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, one that stands out, of course, is the fire station. Right. I think everything has been checked off now, but there could be a few minor things. Uh, but, uh, 
It looks good. Okay. All right, we'll revisit. Anything else, Carl, for old business from you? Uh, let's see. Hey, looking. Uh, let's see. Just to last week, I met with the uh, Honcom panel and yep. determined a number of applicants that we would be interviewing in those applications. And those people will be met with next week. And Great. Um, so that's progressing along. And then I just want to remind anybody that wants to submit something for the special or the annual town meeting, get it into us by April 1st. Yeah. So that's what I had, sir. OK. So what's left is North Pond violation waiting for fishing game. Appointments for town boards and committees. That's getting closer, am I understanding? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move old the appointment for uh, AGCOM to be an agenda item for discussion next week. Okay. Could we all select the people in the sky object? But um, I've spoken to Mr. Hansen. <coughs> He's still here. I spoke to Mr. Hansen. They're going to carry it as an agenda item in their, dis their meeting this week. Okay. And send forth a recommendation um, to us for further discussion. There's still some items to be worked out based on my, not for AGCOM, but for others, uh, based on my discussion with town council. Um, I'd also like to move forward a discussion for carry as an agenda item for our next meeting is appointments to um, high speed internet. So. All right. So, so Doug, both of the, all of those things are under the old business now. Are you stating that you I want to carry them as specific agenda items as an appointment? Or we yes, or at least as an agenda yes, as an agenda item for handling under our meeting next week. Whether we want to have, um, I don't know that we need to interview for those. We can discuss it. But given the the previous open meeting law claims that were made, we will be very deliberate in this process. Also add uh, historical commission. I was getting to that one. Oh, yes, yes. and, and um, I believe that one um, as well for historic. It, 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 do you also want high speed internet committee ones there too? Yeah, we'll carry those three for discussion on how we're going to approach them next week. Okay. All right, so you want us to move those from old business up to what, new business? Or as a scheduled a scheduled appointment on the agenda next week at some point. Okay, we can make that a scheduled agenda appointment then. Correct. Uh, just realize next week you are not meeting, that'll be the 21st. That would be fine. That's fine. That'll give us time to shape up the agenda. Sewer system IMA with Westfield. So sitting there, board and committee's procedure. Harry. Harry. White Street layout, we just discussed. Truck parking and air brake regulation bylaw. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I reached out to uh, Chief Landis, who's here tonight, and if he'd like to stay, make any statement, that's certainly welcome. Um, we had the safety officer in on this, and he basically said there was no safety issue. It's a quality of life issue. Uh, talking to Chief Landis, uh, he concurs that they've, they've had no issues whatsoever. So I think this came out of, you know, might be something that'd be better to be referred to the master plan study committee, because I don't think there's an urgency here because we don't have a, any issue. And Chief Landis made some good points that, you know, certain roads were mentioned, but if, if you're going to do something like this, why aren't you looking at all the roads? You now, so I'd like to suggest to the board that this this uh, issue be sent to the uh, master plan. Thoughts? Um, I mean, I reviewed the request. I, I have no objection to the to the thought. I I think it, statutorily, it's going to end up coming back to this board. I don't know that the granularity of the master plan subcommittee is going to look at something. At, at this level, but yeah, worthy of it can be carried as an agenda item in master plan and as the, the designee, I'll take it back to them and say, this is 
Yeah. Should we have this discussion from a, you know, there's, and see if it's, they believe it's the right forum to address that as part and parcel of the master plan. Okay. I just didn't want to see it just keep languishing. No, no I get it. We, yeah. we need you to know, take some and, action and on it. We don't, I, we don't, uh, you know, our I, plate's kind of full getting ready for the town meeting. Right. And we, we did ask the gentleman the basis, the genesis of his idea, right. and it seemed to come out of a singular project. Right. And so, I hadn't heard, and I, I believe from the safety officer and from from others that it it hasn't been a big issue in town. No, um, you know, exhaust We're trying how to so curb it so, if it, if, right. it, if it did arise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it was brought up when the first um, when the same parcel was looked at before this last time it was looked at. There was X amount of trucks coming into town, and I laughed and said, well, "We don't have a trucking terminal. We don't have a." F.L. Roberts or a pride that fits 50 trucks to sit until their scheduled time, you know, so, yeah. All right, master committee it is. Yeah, I, just get some feedback and get some, throw it out there. And, you know, another consideration I, I thought about would be uh, for an agricultural community, right, the farm and, you know, during when we're, people are doing silage, I mean, we've got a lot of heavy trucks. Oh, we do. You know. Um, and, and I certainly don't want to take any action that's going to hurt agriculture. Um, right. So, and the same thing is happening with agriculture in the springtime, bringing in heavy trucks to do liming and fertilizing and, and uh, spreading rye, things like that. So. Anything else under old business? Um, I have, uh, Mr. Steinhardt and I have worked on that declaration of solidarity with Ukraine. Yep. If I can, uh, it's, uh, we didn't retype it, so if I'm, I'm going to try. Uh, it would read, Southwick stands in solidarity with the people of Ukraine in the face of this abhorrent, unprovoked assault on their country, their freedom, and their lives. The board asked Southwick residents to join with us in expressing our support for Ukraine, for its people, especially for our fellow Massachusetts residents with Ukrainian roots who are deeply worried about the safety and welfare of their loved ones right now. As we bear witness to the escalating tensions, we ask our community to support the efforts to implement aggressive sanctions that punish Russia and cripple its economy, as well as support Ukraine. Do need a motion? I'll, if it's all right, I'll make that a form of motion that we accept that proper notice. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Joe D. D. I. Russ Fox, I. Doug Mogan, I. The second thing I had, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I would like to ask that the uh, fire chief uh, um, have listed under uh, goals and objectives, uh, fire chief recruitment process, Asked that that business. Okay. Yeah, we got to start looking at that. It's March. The big picture. Yeah. It's March. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Any old business? Oh, got it already. Thank you. All right. I don't have any. Carl, we're good. Still. Uh, well, I just want to remind you, last week I did give you that other draft job description of that new assistant AO position, so it'd be appreciated if you guys could review that and um, get it back to us so that we could uh, uh, bring that forward to the full board and um, see what edits need to be made. So why don't you put that on the agenda for two weeks out too, right? So we All right. pass it and we actually discuss it. Yep. Thank you. All right. So that's all we have for old business. That's going to conclude tonight's meeting. We are going to go in executive session to not reconvene. Thank you for coming. A motion to go in executive session for MGL Chapter C thirty A S twenty one two and three Chapter two one four Section one B and CMR twenty dash oh three one B. Labor Council litigation and threatened litigation and collective bargaining strategy for non-union staff, department heads and collective bargaining units, police coalition, DPW, and 
uh, IAFF, Executive Session, MGL Chapter 30, AS 21, 2, and 3, Chapter 3, and 4, Section 1B and CMR 29.03, 1B, Exemption Number 2, Moving we'll on executive session to conduct collective bargaining sessions with non union personnel and to not session. Moving we'll on executive session to conduct contract negotiations with non union personnel and to not reconvene an open session. To declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on a bargaining position of the body and to not reconvene an open session. Exemption three, we need to go in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and that the chair move to go into executive session to conduct strategy sessions and preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and to not reconvene an open session. Move to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and that the chair declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the body and to not reconvene an open session. Chapter 2 and 4, Section 1 B, a person shall have the right against unreasonable, substantial, and serious interference with their privacy. The Superior Court shall have jurisdiction and equity to enforce such an connection, therefore, to award damages. Joe DDI, Russ Fox, aye. Good moving on. 